Zen at the Sharp End. Welcome to the podcast about how to turn difficult people and relationships into your best teachers. I'm Mark West Maquette, a Zen Buddhist teacher, mindfulness teacher, and ex professional astronomer. This is a podcast to go along with my latest book, Zen and the Art of Dealing with Difficult People, which is out now and available to order in all the usual places. In each episode, we'll be exploring different varieties of people, relationships and situations that we find irritating, difficult or painful. Together with a number of Zen friends, I'll be discussing how the practices of Buddhism and mindfulness can help us see our difficult people as troublesome Buddhas, our greatest teachers. This podcast is sponsored by Zen Minded an online lifestyle store offering you the very best in Japanese craft, incense, and other Zen-inspired home goods. Check it out at www.zenminded.uk. Welcome, April, and thank you so much for being willing to come on the podcast. Um, I wonder if perhaps we could start off just by talking a little bit about your background in Zen and, and how you came across Zen and how you've been practicing. Okay, yeah, thanks for asking me. Um, yes, I was. Uh, I came to Zen through a spiritual journey that I was already on. Um, I'd sort of like woken up to life at some point, you know, sort of like earlier. And um, as through that journey, there was just one moment uh, I had a big opening. I was turning left on a road and then suddenly the whole world went off and that's really really hard to describe but everything changed everything changed from there I mean it, um, and I went around sort of like didn't know exactly what had happened but I found it was so different I couldn't talk to people they you know they didn't understand what I was talking about mm. so I knew it was something to do somewhere I'd got the thing of being present in the present moment I'd heard somebody say the best present you could give yourself is being present in the moment mm. so I started with that and I just kept practicing that that and, and I knew that I just needed to wait till the right thing came along I couldn't you know I couldn't find it so something sort of said wait and I was on a retreat uh, with with some other people and two people from Zenways came along to as facilitators to help us you know meditate and show us those ways and from that I just remember sitting at the tent door talking to these guys and that's it I know I know this is it because they were talking about Zen ways and mm. and it seemed to be this is what I've been doing this is where I'm going and this is what is, is coming up so they introduced they came up and told me about the the breakthrough to zen mm. um, which i i went on to and that was the <laughs> that was it i met dyson um and went through the breakthrough to zen and i just thought this is what i've been looking for mm. it was amazing mm. it was amazing so then went on to do you know sort of like a few more of the breakthrough to zens and then did the mm. teacher training and uh, and the second training, mm. and, um, and, yes. and how long how long was it when you first sort of had your um, you know initial awakening that you were waiting? You said you were waiting, and then you met people from Zenways. How how long was that period? That was about two years. Was it? Was it? Mm. About two years. It was a lot. It was a long time. In those two years, I did actually he listen to Eckhart Tolle, so I got some mm. sort of like idea of living in the present and present moment awareness and mm. mindfulness. And yes, yeah, so I, I got a, a clue from that. And re, I read a couple of books. Uh, and the final one was I read a book about what Buddhism is. And that clinked it as, as well. So I knew yeah. before I met mm. Zenways, it was something to, around Buddhism, because that seemed that practice seemed to be a sit well with where I was at. Mm. Where mm. I was and and then how long has it been since you first met those people? Uh, um, so coming up five years now. Is it? Is it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been quite a long journey then, yeah? Mm. It has, mm. but it's been a, a very wonderful journey. Mm. Yes. Mm. And very so do you remember maybe the first time when you came across this phrase, troublesome Buddhas? 
Um, only only since joining Zenways as troublesome Buddhas, I always mm. knew that they, they were troublesome people. Mm. Uh, and uh, I had a saying, I was always going with the saying of live and let live. That was as far as I got, you know, with people that were difficult or people that got my goat or people that yeah. triggered something in me or made me, you know, sort of like, a, you know, upset my equilibrium, really. So I, mm. I knew that they were but troublesome Buddhas. No, it was only when we started to do this was that that name, and it just it makes sense. It's it's a beautiful saying. Mm, mm. So and and live and let live. How does that? What does that sort of? How does that mean to you? So if if somebody's really you know their 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 behaviour is you know sort of like you know it's just it's really bothering me. You know it's, it's getting my goat. It's it's it's. Uh, understanding where they're coming from and then just let them get on with their life and me get on with mine and stop oh, trying right. to interfere or change things or whatever yeah it's a it's a very good one because you know there's there's plenty uh you know i've been very familiar with lots of meetings so i've been going to meetings with people and that's where that mm. came up it was oh, yeah yeah mm-hmm. and then and then the sort of buddha angle you know d- d- how does that change things or do, does it change ch- things things a bit you know adding that phrase troublesome buddhas yes it was uh it was a connection to all beings we're all the same so and we've all got it you know we we we, we all are capable of being troublesome buddhas ourselves um yes it's it's uh it's not just me you know so mm. like and everybody has that inherent buddha nature that's what i saw about it so everybody actually is you know the buddha anyway mm. and so it's seeing through seeing through the cloud i at all the veil of mm. behavior of conditioning and right 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 yeah yeah that's it so that's such an interesting way of putting it isn't it because you know people have this sort of built up experiences and conditioning and habits and patterns and things that in some level are like kind of obscure if if you like their their innate true being and it's you know as you say sort of like parting or or seeing through that to see what is underneath yes and seeing a bigger picture not my just my reaction it's all about me you know it's, mm. it's my reaction it's how are mm. they where are they coming from and and sometimes it's really difficult, really difficult when it's really a strong feeling and it's something really, really strong to actually sit there and think there is good or in nature because the behaviour is just not according to me. <laughs> you know, right. the way I'm reacting, uh, it's just not on, you know, sort of like, yeah, and have the rumbling of the emotions going, it's not fair and judging and all that sort of thing. But uh, mm. it takes time to pause and... And start, you know, at the pause is the best thing that I've found, but it's quite hard to get to that if it's a really strong trigger. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's it. We get this kind of flash of emotion. And then yes. to, to, to get into the habit of just even taking a microsecond and pausing and just seeing what's going on, it's really yeah. hard, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. I've learned yeah. bit by bit, and it's taken some practice to – let that feeling run through rather than, you know, if it's a huge rage, because sometimes it can be rage, it's not anger. It's mm. just deep down rage. It come up, feel that rather than what I used to do was just quite quickly distract. I can't do that, can't do that, you know. Oh. So, so, yeah, and I'm, I'm finding by the practice of just letting it come, it's incredibly uncomfortable, but it comes and it goes. And then the next time, you know, the next time in the pause, I can sort of like start to see it and calm down. So, so letting the emotion arise, uh, but then there may be a temptation to want to act on that emotion as well. There is. That's where the second pause comes in. Okay. Yes, it's a, it's quite a uh, for, for me. It's quite a quick action. You know, and it doesn't actually happen all the time. I'm not, I'm not able to do that all the time. Mm, but that's mm. the when I do do it, it just makes things so so much easier. Mm, mm. So, have you got any particular like? Can, can we sort of take this and attach it to a, an example to maybe illustrate this a bit more clearly? Clearly, 
Yes, um, I'm a bit further down the, the, the road now, but I can give you the example of what, what I did, did originally for the book because mm. I can see it more clearly. But my handling of it at the time, um, basically just was saying that, that being locked down and being retired, I'm not in the workplace. So mm. I'm not coming across those troublesome Buddhas very often. So and I'm, those particular ones, right? Yes, mm. yes. So mm. I'm, I'm referring back to to the one that I gave you. Um, mm. And that was not... It was it was a t- constant. This lady that was sitting opposite me in in work, um, mm. she just had this attitude of. So, so of- what was your work? Just just because the people listening may not have read the book, or what, what can you? What was the what was the workplace? Okay, I was working in a sales team, mm-hmm. um, and it was a table full of salespeople, and this lady that I worked with, uh, she was in the same team, but sitting opposite me with, mm-hmm. um, and I would see her interactions all day mm-hmm. um, and it was you know looking looking back it was just a, a deep you know sort of judgment of she was so superior and put mm-hmm. down and I'd see her put down other people and then I would get myself all involved in how that other person's thinking and feeling mm-hmm. and get myself torn up with it and it took some time it really was quite hard because uh, she was uh, constant, constant, constantly there every day. It would be there. Mm. But, uh, you know, looking back, I set up myself to go in there ready for it, you know, or, you know, sort of like anticipating it. So so that wasn't very helpful. But as time went on, um, I started to see that the, the things that were really irritating her, <laughs> I actually had those. Uh, oh. those, those traits or I had had those traits but they were very familiar to me um, and then eventually I realized that actually those traits were the same traits as my mother so we came from, from the same class mm. um, uh, and and it, and that was my turn point it was like it's not her actually a lot of it is in me Mm. So it was then at that time I was under, um, I was doing trauma therapy and it was very helpful to be, actually to be able to express what was going on in that in that situation. So we did, got moved, she got moved and, um, and it got easier. But as, as time went on, I saw and I had sort of like huge compassion mm. for who she was because uh, – I'd started by that time having compassion for myself or showing compassion for myself. So if I can mm. have that for myself, and it was so much easier to have compassion for her, really understanding where she was coming from. And it wasn't her so much as her behaviour. Right. And now I understand. Now I, I, I understand it's, you know, our conditioning or it's our, you know, core beliefs or, mm. you know, it's the way that we you know, have perceived life early on and then have to carry that on. So yeah. yes, if I can see that, then it's so much easier. And so the the point in which you realised that it was, that she was mirroring certain traits in yourself or perhaps in your mother, can you remember what, what precipitated that realisation or that understanding? I think I got an inkling and I didn't want to go there. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> That, that was the, the first thing. It was like, this is very familiar. It was very familiar. And I think the familiarity, and I thought, well, you know, at the time, I, I didn't think like I, you know, like I perceive now. But yeah. it was, it was uh, yes, it was very familiar. It was very familiar. And I thought I'd, it was hard to actually own up to it, really, because mm. it, uh, it was not a nice characteristic to have. So, but, but by the time I did, I had to own it. I had to own my stuff, really. Mm, mm. And then, I think, you know, in a sense, I, I was going to say we have no choice, but actually I think we do. We do have a choice. We can basically continue to ignore that part of ourselves and to deny that that is, you know, that that it's um, that this person is mirroring traits in ourselves. Um, but, I, so, but I think so... I, there's some there's something that has to happen and maybe it's a sort of willingness or courage to own up and as you say like own this stuff mm. Mm. yes yes it, it it does take some courage i think because most of the time sort of like try and avoid 
the, the, the truth because yeah. the truth hurts. That that That's wonderful it. saying, the truth hurts. But mm. if I can take it, you know, suck it up, as they say, you know, sort of, you mm. know, sort of like it's it's easier. At that, that time, I was incredibly emotionally all over the place. Nothing had mm. settled, so it was harder then. On reflection now, if that same situation has come up, you know, from time to time, people will irritate more than anything else and it will mm. always be with me turn the torch what is it in me that is mm. similar you know which is it's annoying what I, and usually it's something i don't like about myself mm. it could be mm. judgment you know sort of like somebody's judging somebody else and i turn it around and think oh, you do that sometimes mm. so i find out from, from me and then if i can then think okay do you forgive yourself for that being that um then and if i see that then i'm it's so much easier to just sort of like oh forgive the other person and then i get mm. what i call equilibrium or we're the same i get back to that we're the same uh, you know what's the problem you know right right yeah mm. so there's 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 one or two really interesting steps in what you just described there the sort of um realizing or or being willing to face these things that that there are traits within yourself like like being willing to turn the the lens or the the, turn the view back on yourself and if it feels to me like that's a certain level of a habit like we develop this this habit of as soon as someone irritates you you look okay. What is it in me? You know that's that's sort of a a practice, isn't it? And then then you talked about the the sort of forgiveness. So c- do you do you could you talk a little bit about over the years how that habit and that sort of practice of forgiveness has arisen in you? Yes, I think to begin with, um, it was a more entitlement. You know, I think I have this entitlement. Um, <clears throat> feeling that you know nobody could, should speak to me like that, or oh. this shouldn't be happening to me. Uh, very much a resistance, very self-centered, and very much uh, about me. Um, and I think when I started to soften myself, I think there's something in me that softened that it was okay to be me. Mm. Um, and then the, the you know. I, I learned, you know, to sort of like be kind to yourself, to have compassion. And at the time, I hadn't a clue what that was because my right. history was of no compassion, of no love, really, from a family, sort of like it was a family of being dealt with. So I didn't actually know how to do that. So I had to find out what, what that was. I found it out from books by talking to people, by sharing with people, by helping others, and then uh, they in turn helped myself. Um, and that... Then, then it just sort of like by softening, it was like gave myself mm. permission to forgive myself, um, and and then it's become more e- easier to do. It's being less hard on myself. I think that was one of the comments that people used to say to me all the time: "Was April, you're so hard on yourself." Uh, uh, <clears throat> um, mm. And there was no forgiveness or no compassion because I thought I had to do the right thing. Mm. I had to do, you know so that I wouldn't get criticised or so I wouldn't, um, yes, to be criticised or not do it right, you know, I had to mm. be do it right, so then then I wouldn't get criticised. But all the time, it was I was doing the criticising myself. It wasn't anybody else doing it. <laughs> right. It was me, me doing it. So it was really the softening. It was, I, I can say that now. I didn't know that at the time. Yeah. But it was just, I think, more and more awareness, you know, more and more hearing it from others, you know, learning it from, yeah, learning it from others was a lot. Yeah. You know, yeah. how they did it. And it was, it had to happen within me. I, I couldn't make myself forgive myself. Right. It just had to, it it came. And I yeah, think, yeah. Mm. Like and over think, time. Mm. Yes. And one of, one of the ones of trying to forgive myself or have compassion myself was to go and think about, for me, animals. How did I feel about animals? Which was all encompassingly compassionate and, uh, okay. loving and kind, you know. And that I remember that being first indication of, oh, this is what it feels like. 
Ah, I see. So, so going to like going to something in your in your sphere of your world or whatever where you feel very able to offer compassion. Mm. I mean, I, I suspect for other people it may be I don't know small babies or or um, y- you know other things, but but for you it was just thinking about animals and and starting off with that. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yes. Mm. So there's something there about if you find someone difficult, being willing to turn the lamp around and look at yourself and then like the willingness and the ability to forgive yourself for being who you are then allows you to then turn that back out at the other person. Like there's a, there's a sort of inward process which then folds back out to the other person again. Yes, but I I must say, I do turn the torch around, but sometimes it's not all me. You know, I do do actually recognise nowadays, you know, actually that was unnecessary behaviour. That was unhelpful behaviour and acknowledge that. So For for the other person, you mean? Yes, so Mm -hmm. it might be, uh, you know, but I'd still turn the torch, but it's, I, you know, in turning the torch, I'm not saying, oh, it's all me. You know, it's all about yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, okay. who I am. It's, it's actually sometimes people's behaviour is out of line, you know, mm. or harmful, especially when I see that happening to other people, that person. When when I see sort of like that troublesome Buddha upset other people, that's, yeah. I found, one of the hardest. Oh, to, to witness, to witness to, someone being irritating or painful to another person. Mm. Yes, I, f- I find that that harder to deal with than mm. than personally me you know mm. yeah got it yeah mm. 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 yeah so i mean i wonder perhaps there are some other examples from you know just in your recent life of meeting difficult people <laughs> Well, uh, I think with COVID and and the lockdown, and also because I'm retired, I'm not getting out to, you know, I'm not in the workplace. Uh, yeah, I go yeah. to the supermarket, and so I can quickly see, you know, uh, whether I'm standing in the queue and and looking at that person who's jumping the queue, and quickly, uh, you know, sort of like just know the irritation that comes up the judgment that quickly come up, they shouldn't be mm. doing that. Oh, that's rude or whatever. But then it quickly turn, oh, I wonder what sort of day they're having. Mm. Wonder where they're coming from. And then it stretch out to who they belong to, you know, who belongs, you know, their families, you know, just reach it out a bit and and I just put the attention back to where I'm, what I'm doing and mind my mm. own business. Yeah, those, those sort of things. And I think being on Zoom, as in the early early days of Zoom, uh, you know, I found uh, people moving around, and while while th- you know meetings were going on, being oh, yeah. intensely irritating, um, and that and I had to to really work on, you know, <laughs> people moving around while they're talking or moving on while no, no, just you know when you're when you're on a meeting and then there's p- people that haven't got the camera right or they're getting up and they're moving around or they're changing the camera, you know, they're changing the camera position and they're getting up and you know you can see it. yeah so the, the uh, that I found intensely irritating because mm-hmm. it was just catching my eye all the time, so. I, Eventually, I worked out was just don't take any notice. <laughs> that, mm. that was the end result. Just take your focus away from them because I would find myself focusing on them and losing what was actually going on with, with within the meeting. Yeah, yeah. So I think I think we have um, troublesome people, and then you could say like troublesome categories of people. Yes. You know, it's not one particular person, but it's a type of behavior that we encounter, um, you know, maybe on a regular basis or whatever like this, like your example, where where perhaps it's, um, yeah, I don't know. What, 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 so what was your process with that one then? That one was, was just recognizing it, recognizing it because it was on my mind, you know, I'd, the meeting would go over, uh, would be over and I would still be thinking about those irritating people that were moving around and they shouldn't right. be doing it. Da, 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 da. You know, when it when it's when it's still on my mind, <laughs> I'm still thinking about it after the event. Then I know that oh come on, 
you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what's going on about it. Yes, yeah, so, so it's really to try and um, just keep my focus on what was going on, not what mm. they were doing. And it, that was just a bit of practice to, to mm -hmm, do. Mm -hmm. The other one that really, I suppose, the current one that comes up and is a really interesting one I thought of this morning was table manners. Oh, yeah. Now, I've, I've got a grand grandson. <clears throat> He's ten and a half. Beautiful. I mean, all, they're, they're all, all beautiful. But my upbringing was manners, manners, manners. Mm. It was just instilled. And, uh, and I've always had a real thing about people with manners, you know, sort of table manners, because mm. it was so instilled in me. I know it's instilled in me from there, but it was still getting me. So my grandson is sort of like uh, eating, you know, all over the place, just all the knives and forks up in the air and <laughs> eating with his hands and grabbing things. And I'm yeah. absolutely incandescent with rage inside. Is that, uh -huh. And that's just, so it, it's amazing how, how strong that is. And mm -hmm. it happened this Christmas. And so because of this current, you know, concentrate or focus on troublesome Buddhas, I really, really was able to just go, okay, just breathe. <laughs> don't, yeah. don't look at him. Don't look at him. <laughs> because most of the time in my mind, why doesn't somebody tell him, you know? Mm -hmm. Or, and I didn't have the courage to do it myself. You sort of, but yeah, all the judgment. Has, and I knew it was from, it was unreasonable. I knew it was coming from an unreasonable place. So knowing that it's unreasonable reaction from me helps, helps ease it. But it's, it's incredible. It goes back to the past. Mm, mm. So I was just like, don't look at him, you know, and, and I, that particular, this Christmas, it was just breathe through it and eat. Yeah. Do what right. we do. Just eat. So, mm. and that ease off. And, and in fact, actually, by the end of it, it, it didn't bother me quite so much. Mm. Uh, did you did you feel the need to speak about it, or was it just a f purely like internal thing? Oh, totally internal. I wouldn't mm. have dared speak about it. It wasn't my business. Basically, I could, as a granny, say say that, but um, no, I I didn't have the, I suppose, that courage to say it. Do you think, yeah, do you think yeah. it would have it would have helped at some level or? It, it would have done, but it was mum and dad were there, um, mm. you know, and the whole family were there. And I, I think it, you know, I think, I think I wanted to pass the responsibility where well, they should be doing it. So maybe I'll mm. have a word with Danny later. Yeah. Yeah. I think sometimes, like from my own experience, I think sometimes when the emotion is very, very strong, you feel, um, uh, I feel worried that if I said something, it would come out wrong. It would come out like, you know, hurtful or or very strong. And it, it's very, I, I would feel very, very difficult to sort of temper your uh, emotional response to actually say something kind or, or at least like, um, you know, helpful in that situation. Yes, I didn't actually think that through. It was like, no, it's somebody else's job. <laughs> Right, right, right. Like yeah. just kind of sit and with this avoidance. emotion. Yes. Mm -hmm. It was avoidance, you know, avoidance of me having to say anything or express that. I didn't think it would have been kind in any way, you know, mm. so everybody's enjoying dinner. I see the other granny doing it very often to them, and I, I find that really hard watching her constantly criticising negative. Oh, okay, so okay. Maybe mm. I don't want to be a granny like that either. So. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Right, right, right. Got lots, lots of different sort of things coming in from different angles. Mm. Yes, yes. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I mean, do you think? Um, do you think that's the sort of um, an a, a, an approach you'll continue to have? You know, in that kind of situation. Maybe next Christmas. You know, food's going everywhere, and just sort of sit with it. Or do you feel like there's a there's there's more work to be done? here or I, th I think what, what the conclusion I came to actually after was that was I would say say something I would say something to 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 mum and dad mm. um I've just mm. mentioned it what, whatever happens I've got to leave it at that but if I if I did that then then and I think actually more than anything else is I'm aware of it I'm aware that that comes up so as soon as I have that awareness if I see him doing it it won't have that same intensity he's always yeah. intense table manners but if I'm, 
I suppose if I'm aware of it and I've now bought it up and now I've talked about it, it's out in the open and I can't hardly yeah. go back to, you know, sort of like bemoaning the fact that, you know, he's... Yeah. You know, because actually, more than anything else, it's he doesn't know he's doing it like that. No. He doesn't know he's harming. So, you know, he's enjoying his dinner. <laughs> Probably a lot. Yeah, he really was. I certainly was. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was it. That was, but that's about, you know, that because I'm not out in the workplace. Funny enough, I was thinking about that this, this, this morning and I thought there's something about the comfort zone that I'm in. Mm. So I'll be mindful, actually, when, when I go out that I'm not used to, you know, I'm not... Uh, yeah, I'm a bit away from dealing yeah. with people. Um, mm. So it might come as a shock, I think. Well, I wonder if perhaps there are many people, you know, who are, mm. who are in a similar situation. For the last couple of years, people have been fairly sort of um, holed up a bit in their house and haven't been socialising as much as they would be normally. So mm. I mean, it's probably a very, um, a lot of people would resonate with that. Mm. Yeah, and I think that has a thing in its own. Um, uh, because I, 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 for, for me, I can actually visualise myself being absolutely fine out there. You know, that's mm. the whole visualisation, sitting from the very good comfort zone of where I am. Um, and I have to be mindful, actually, it's not quite going to be like that because mm. I can build up, oh, it's all right, I can go out, I can deal with anything, but... I have to look at the the truth of the fact. <laughs> not quite be like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's funny, isn't it? Troublesome, yeah. troublesome relationships can come from all sorts of different different places, isn't it? I mean, even 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 a hermit, you know, can have a troublesome relationship, you know, with um, people they see in the distance, or um, you know. Um, all sorts of like even like the bird that always lands on the roof of his hut or all, all sorts of things you know so um it, it's just about as you say like learning to or having the willingness to turn that around look at yourself you know the sense of forgiveness and a sense of uh, looking at where do i um fit into this particular relationship um is it something that is it the way i'm responding is it purely their response is it something that's coming from my past all sorts of things so I, th I think we've touched on a lot of things there um yeah. mm. thank you so much for being willing to you know be on so honest and, and bring these things up there was one last one was that i have people of interest they're the le next level down from oh yeah the troublesome buddha which is the meeting one-to-one -one, face to face or whatever you know, sort of like really interacting. If yeah. I don't have interacting, so like the always, not always, but frequently don't turn up or don't ah. are late or whatever. I call those people of interest because they will start staying on my mind and I'll be that, mm, you know, feeling resentful about it. And if I'm, <laughs> the meeting's over and I'm still in my day and, you know, I'm cooking dinner and they come up still as a... Yeah. A, a feeling or a judgment you know then that that's just sort of like not on according to april you know what i mean yeah oh come yeah. on come on they don't even know i exist ah and it's a, it's somebody else's habit and where does it come from because i mean i'm thinking of one particular person they're everything that i was a while ago it, all good stuff enthusiastic, young, and really, you know, gung-ho and going mm. out there and late and being centre of attention. Guess what? There was a period of my life that that was me. Uh, so uh, I just recognised that quite quickly. Mm, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. So troublesome people that we've never even met. <laughs> yeah. uh, mm. That's how ridiculous is it? Well, not at all. I, I, it's not ridiculous. I, th I, th I think that's that's the thing. The more we think about this, the more I think about this, the more you know. It, it touches so many different areas of our life in so many different ways. And uh, yeah, I mean, people not showing up. I, I it's amazing, isn't it? 
find find people irritating that we've never even met before incredible yeah, mm. that's mm. just daft the other yeah. troublesome buddha is me mm. if i look at that you know it's uh the way that i treat myself sometimes mm. with the harshness so that that one's i have a you know have to keep looking at mm. Mm. so who's bothering me today it's only me and my uh mm. ideas about myself mm. Mm. And that, that one is quite easy, easy. It's much easier to deal with today, you know, so because uh, I know it'll only be temporary. It's just pass. You won't be like this mm. forever. And you won't be thinking like this forever. Mm. Mm. Tomorrow you can feel totally different about yourself. Mm. Yeah. Well, I, I suspect that's a, um, what, what feels like quite a natural response, which has taken years of practice and, reflection contemplation to to get to that point and I, I i i get the sense that probably a lot of people would find that really difficult to appreciate oh it's just today just me just right now it'll be changing that's that's quite a deep like uh insight mm. Mm. and that that's actually through practice through practice it, it, mm. it's, it's practice and uh it's kindness kindness compassion and uh, seeing the bigger picture mm. for me i call it the bigger picture you know it's seeing not just that direct say that person that doesn't turn up and always turning up it's the bigger picture is where are they coming from how are they in their lives you know, what makes them late you know uh mm. and uh, and they you know sometimes i think i think what other i know what other people think and that is the biggest delusion of all Ah, yeah, right, yeah. yeah. You know yeah. that whole thing of being unafraid, of being afraid to say things or be do things. It's like what people might think. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between how I see myself and how other people see me? I just came to the conclusion I have no idea what other people think, but what I fear is that they think how I think. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, which would be. You know, if I've made a mistake, oh, they'll, they'll be thinking, the silly fool, you know, why mm. did you do that and everything. That's my thinking. It's not how they are. So that was a great one I found a couple of weeks ago. Mm. I have no idea how other people are thinking mm. or mm. Who, who they are, but I've mm. got, got a general sense how we all are. Mm. Mm. And they might actually have a little bit of me in there because I certainly have a little bit of them in me as well. Yep, that's it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Yeah. Well, I mean, thank you so much, really, um, for 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 your honesty and willingness to to bring all of those um, situations and thoughts and reflections into this space. No, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please leave a review and a star rating on whatever platform you use. And do recommend it to others, because we all have difficult people in our lives, and each of them offers us a real opportunity for learning and growth. For more information about my book and what else I offer, head over to my website, markwestmaquette.co.uk. Thanks so much for listening. Bye for now. <laughs>